2017 NFL Offensive Player of the Year, now in his first season with the Atlanta Falcons. Running back Todd Gurley, and he's here thanks to Pillsbury and the Welcome Home Project. Welcome to the program, Todd. How are you, pal? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on. You've been welcomed home, sort of, back to Georgia where you went to college. How's it feel to be back where you, you played for the Bulldogs? Um, it feels great, man. It definitely feels great. And I think that's, that's the whole point of it, um, to be able to just to come back home, um, being able to, to partner up with Pillsbury and Operation Home Front to, to help bring military families, um, you know, back home, give them a home and help them transition into regular civilian life. So I think that's just the whole thing of just being, me being able to just come back to Georgia, you know, not only being able to feel home on the field, but like off the field, being able to get back into the community, um, you know, play for the city of Atlanta, um, think about, you know, just doing stuff in the community and, and just giving back. What has stood out the most to you so far during this first season with the Falcons? Um, just, I mean, it's just been a, you know, a weird year, first of all, you know, obviously with, with the, you know, the pandemic, then you have the election, then you have the season, um, season not going well, like we thought it would at the beginning, but, um, you know, being able to pick things up and, and then being able to still try to do my stuff, you know, off the field, um, you know, obviously can't really do much stuff hands on, um, obviously. So it's, it's been, I've been, it's been going, it's been going well. It's been going well. You got the holidays coming up. So I'm excited about that, you know, being able to just, you know, not only see myself and my family and my friends, but my teammates and, and, and everyone around, you know, the, the nation, especially after the year we had. So um, that's why it's just happy, just like happy just to be able to just do the stuff that I'm doing, you know, be able to provide um, Brittany and Trevor um, and their son Noah um, a, a new home, you know, uh, being able for them to be able to have, have a place to be at, to, to feel welcome, um, to just to feel home and, you know, it's nothing, nothing better than that than to have that during these times, especially during the holiday. Tell me a little bit more about how and why you got involved with that Welcome Home project. Um, it, it goes back to, like I said, being able to, to come back to Georgia, the state of Georgia, um, not only try to, you know, make a statement on the field, but just to try to make a statement off. Um, there's so much, so much things that need to be done in this world. And, you know, a great city of Atlanta and to be able to be a fan of Pillsbury my whole life and, you know, be able to partner up with them. Um, never in a million years, I would have, would have thought of an opportunity like this to be able to, to help someone um, and provide them, you know, with a home. So I just want to say thank you to Pillsbury and Operation Home Front for being able to get me involved in, um, you know, to the community. Um, to the state of Georgia, the city of Atlanta, um, you know, just to represent something, you know, bigger than myself. Not only it's not even about me, it's about, you know, um, you know, Trevor and, and Brittany, um, you know, for them to be happy, for them to feel home. And, you know, I wouldn't have it any other way than just, just to keep doing the stuff that I'm doing, um, you know, little by little, one by one. And just thankful for, for Pillsbury for being able to not only uh, provide me with this opportunity, but for, to provide the military family, you know, with an opportunity to be in a, 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 a home, a, a brand new home at that. Well, I'm going to take you to a place where you definitely have become at home in recent years, and that's on the football field. You mentioned that the Falcons started off slowly. Three and four, three and one, excuse me, over the last four games, however, when do you think things turned in the Falcons' direction? What was the moment? Mm, when I messed up that um, Detroit game and scored, <laughs> you know, we figured out. <laughs> we figured out we we were we were a lot closer to winning in that game than we were on the other one. So um, we just got it together. We got it together. I think everybody just really got tired of of being in those same situations, even though we still try to make those situations come up, but we're more comfortable now. We know how to finish those games. We've been in those games and 
it was more just like enough is enough. We know what we have. We know what we what we what we can and what we can't do. And everyone just needed to step up. You know, it's it's in every running back's instinct to get to the end zone. It almost felt like there was a magnet just pulling you. How, how, how what, what, what are you experiencing in that moment as you try to slam on the brakes and avoid breaking the front end of the goal line? Um, clumsiness, <laughs> you know, just, <laughs> the way I fell, it was just like slow, almost like roll my ankle. Um, yeah, man, just, just as a football player, especially as a running back, just kind of just really just doing my job, um, knowing the situation, but just going through the hole, um, trying to still run hard and protect myself. You know, I didn't want to just try to go through there tiptoeing and then, you know, somebody blast me now, I'll be out for the game. But, um, you know, it was a learning experience. You know, as m- many situations as, as I've been in in four minutes and been down, I done went down. You know, it can go on the opposite end as well. So you know, um, I'm glad that happened. Um, we we definitely been able to be a better team from that. Not only from that, but um, just from every you know loss that we we dealt with this year. You've got nine games done. Your bye week is upon us. You're averaging just about 18 carries a game. What's your ideal workload at this point? I guess that. <laughs> I guess, I guess that, man. So, um, you know, it's been some tough yards. We've been, we've been trying to get things done, you know, trying to get in the end zone. Um, but trying to help Matt out, help the pass game out. So, body's feeling good. Just got to get myself right and get ready for the game, you know, the week after next. I'm always fascinated by the comparisons from quarterback one team to another. I know you've only been in Atlanta half a season, but can you can, do you have a sense of similarities, differences between Matt Ryan and Jared Goff? Yeah, they're both rich as hell. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, man. I don't know. Quarterbacks are funny to me, bro. They just like, you know, they're good dudes, though, Matt. You know, sometimes I just sit back and I just like laugh because he's – no, he's very demanding. He's very demanding. And, you know, as he should, you know, he's a guy who's been in the league for, for quite a while. So, um, and, you know, you just see the difference between the age of just the reactions between Matt and, and golf. You know, golf's more laid back. He's chill. He's young. I'm pretty sure 10 years from, from now he's going to be, you know, um, very responding to the coaches as he is with the players. So, um, and then just being comfortable. And you got to prove yourself in this league, man. You know, it, it doesn't happen overnight, as you know. Um, you know, it's year by year. And for someone to do it, you're going to respect someone um, or you're going to look at someone different. Um, that's been doing it 10 years compared to five, you know. So just got to be able to just – I don't know, man. I don't know. I just got to rambling just then. You referred to the fact that they're both rich as hell. When you talk to other running backs around the league, is there ever any, like, you know, I don't get it. These guys are making $30 million plus per year. We're the ones doing the dirty work. We're the ones busting our asses. And, and we got to fight and scratch and claw just to get to $10 million per year. Something's not right here. Do you guys talk about that? Mm, not really. We just stay in our lane. We look. We just happy that we got a job, so we ain't gonna complain about that. <laughs> we ain't gonna complain about that. You start worrying about it a little bit too much, then you're gonna be at the house, and then you ain't you really gonna be making nothing. So um I'm blessed either way it goes, man. You know, um can't never count anyone else's pockets. You have to um, you know, just count your blessings. You know, what makes you happy as long as you and your family are protected and safe. And, you know, that's all that matters. And you're right. You do need to count your own pocket. And it's important to make sure that everything's in your pocket that should be in your pocket. I haven't seen an update on the question of whether or not the Rams have settled up with you and paid you everything they owe you. Have you gotten your check from them yet? Yeah, they got me right, man, June 2nd. Maybe a couple, couple months late, but, you know, better late than never, I would say. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.